All right, let's look at another example. Uh, this time we're just asked to find the general solution to this differential equation, so we're not looking for a particular initial value. Um, now, as written, one thing that maybe you want to note before you even start out is, is that we cannot actually use zero as a solution here, right? Because we, we can't divide by zero. Um, so there, there is a restriction there that you have to be mindful of. Um, if you were trying to solve this equation, you'd have to stay away from zero. All right. Um, aside from that, what do we do? Well, we separate. So let's see. We multiply both sides by y, divide by e to the y, times dy, and on this side we have x squared plus 1 times dx. Okay. Um, now, you're probably going to find it easier to do the integration if you rewrite this as y e to the minus y dy. Okay. So now, now we need to integrate. Okay, so we integrate both sides. Uh, this you probably recognize as something which requires integration by parts. Right. U is equal to y. Du is equal to dy. Dv is equal to e to the minus y dy. V will be minus e to the minus y. Okay, so we carry out that integration we are going to get, what are we going to get? So we get uv, so we get minus y, e to the minus y, okay? Minus the integral of v du, so minus the integral of minus e to the minus y dy. On the other side, we can just integrate, right? One third x cubed plus x plus c. Uh, one more step here. Uh, we integrate, this is going to give us an antiderivative of minus e to the minus y. Um, there's going to be minus, 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 three minus signs overall. Um, I'm going to get minus e to the minus y times y plus one equals one third x cubed plus x plus c. Uh, and that's as far as we go. This is not an equation that you can actually solve for y, okay? There's no, there's no algebraic solution that's going to work um, when you have both y and e to the y showing up together like that. Um, you're not going to be able to solve for y in terms of elementary functions, so you have to leave the implicit solution. It's the best you can do, right? Given our initial conditions, we could figure out what the value of c is, um, but we are asked for the general solution. So this is where we leave it.